Again, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The motion carries. Okay, this brings us down uh, to the business items, and there are two. Uh, the first is that, uh, as many of you may know, uh, community engagement is a key part of the strategic plan for the university. And uh, as faculty, it behooves us to involve ourselves as much as possible in figuring out what our community engagement at this university is going to look like in the future. Uh, for that reason, uh, I, I am going to form an ad hoc committee uh, to examine this question, a committee of faculty, one representative from each college. Uh, you've seen the charge, it's attached to the, uh, to, the, uh, <clears throat> to, the, to the agenda here today. And uh, the members of this committee will be invited to serve on uh, the president's task force, uh, which is being chaired by uh, some guy called Ron Nyan. And uh, so you will be, anybody who's serving on this committee will be invited also to play a role uh, in that other committee. But this will be a Senate committee. Uh, the uh, membership of this committee is open to senators, of course, but also to all faculty uh, in the university. And we will be taking nominations. Uh, you can email them to Arcadia, and uh, we will be hoping to form that committee at the, at the next Senate meeting. Can we take questions? Would you take questions? I, I will take questions about this. Uh, in the spirit of providing the administration with advice about this initiative, um, I'd like to say one thing, and that is please call off your dogs until you get your act together when it comes to community engagement. And by calling off the dogs, I mean the administration has been sending faculty members who are engaged in outside activity nasty letters, letters of discipline or letters that threaten faculty members who are engaged in outside activity with discipline. And this should stop until the administration gets its act together. And by getting its act together, I mean this initiative says that we're supposed to increase outside activity, increase faculty engagement with the community. We, have, we support this. But the very actions that I've been describing are discouraging this activity. There's a lot of fear and uncertainty. And if you read the language in our collective bargaining agreement about outside activity, it says that like the collective bargaining agreements at other universities in the state, that we have to report all professional related activity, paid or unpaid, if it's not part of our assignments. No one knows what that means. The deans don't know what this means. Faculty supervisors don't know what this means. And until there's some clarity about what outside activity has to be reported, I would recommend, as a good piece of advice, that any new faculty member who asks their supervisor or their peer about what kind of outside activity they should engage in, I would say do nothing because any outside activity exposes you to risk. And that risk includes discipline up to dismissal from the university. This is serious and no one knows what outside activity the university is targeting. There has been a change in the language in the collective bargaining agreement. And I understand where this comes from. The president is right to try to get more control of the university. The previous administration had to deal with some scandals. And this effort to gain control of faculty makes some sense, but the way this is being done is creating major problems. For you to come to us asking for more faculty engagement and outside activity, while some other arm of the university is sending these nasty letters, that's a problem. And it's a problem that eventually will probably have to be addressed with a Freedom of Information Act request because there's a great deal of suspicion that you can say or write or do something, but if you say, write, or do something that the administration disagrees with, you are going to get one of these nasty letters put in your personnel file. And that's untenable. And it's not what we want. We want to encourage this activity. This is serious. It's a, an, an extremely important part of the university's future growth and development. But you're doing things which are frustrating. So, uh, 
let, let me respond uh, to some of the points you've made. So it, at, at least one of the specific instances that you're talking about, I became aware of this Tuesday. Uh, and uh, since then, I've been doing a bit of uh, legwork. I've had lengthy conversations both with uh, Peter Hull, uh, the VP for Public Affairs, and with Provost Perry about this very issue. And I, I, I agree that there are some things uh, to be clarified. Uh, if the terms of the collective bargaining agreement are to be changed, that of course is something to be bargained, and that, that should run through the union, and, uh, uh, and we should have a conversation about that. Um, I, I came away from the meetings that I've had less concerned than I was at the beginning. And I understand that uh, Peter Hall has reached out to uh, the person that, that I heard from on Tuesday, and that there is an attempt to, to resolve the situation. One of the things uh, that all of us as faculty should be aware of, um, I, I put it this way to Peter, uh, FAU, since I have been here certainly, has been the epitome of a do-it-yourself university. Grab that paintbrush and do it, right? Uh, and uh, in this instance, there was, a, there was an event coming up that a faculty member had organized and in fact had secured external funding to help support, which is exemplary of what faculty should be doing uh, at this university and should definitely be encouraged. Um, however, it needed to be advertised. And uh, so in an effort to do that, the faculty member had not gone through the public affairs office and the media relations department. Uh, the, the, what I want to tell, the message that I want to get out to faculty generally is that uh, the media relations department is, uh, has a renewed vigor and an eagerness to assist with exactly that sort of problem. And, uh, and we as faculty need to recognize, first of all, that those resources are there for us to use. And second of all, that we have a responsibility to take advantage of them. Because we don't want to have every department at the university or even every individual faculty member running their own media relations operation. We, uh, we, have, we have to proceed strategically on many, many fronts. And I think it behooves us as faculty to, to approach uh, this administrative wing first rather than uh, after the fact. And uh, so this is one of the things uh, that I came away with. The other, the other thing, uh, I, I still have some questions to ask and some conversations to have. Uh, and so uh, I, I don't know if we should talk further about that because I still need to find uh, the facts about, uh, in order to have just to have my own opinion and you're asking me the question. Uh, this so, is far, this problem is far broader than just who gets to speak for the university. Speak to the press. It's, for example, if a faculty member publishes a book and wants to give a talk at the Boca Raton Library, do they have to go to this exec, this vice president, to get permission to do that? These uh, are the kinds of questions that have to be addressed because no supervisor right. can tell their faculty member that they can do that without getting permission. And if someone says something in a public address that the media covers and the university reacts strongly against that, they're going to be exposed so, to discipline. Uh, Senator, I, I, I share your opinions about this. And I want the faculty, I, I think that there, there should be uh, the ability to take initiative in these, uh, uh, in these efforts that we're going to have. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what the policy is at the moment. And I'm not, I'm not sure that I understand. So we can have a conversation about that when the time comes. I would also uh, suggest that this might be the very type of issue that is going to come up in the community engagement committee that we're trying to put together. We need to have an approach to this problem that is going to work for the faculty, because the faculty will be uh, the face that's engaging with the community in many uh, events. Ron, did you have a, a comment that you wanted to add? No, only, again, Jim, I, I don't know about the particular issues, all of the issues that you've raised, but the intent of the community engagement uh, initiative is one that I think that can benefit the faculty a great deal. And to the extent that there are misunderstandings, if there are, or uh, adjustments that need to be made, 
I think the purpose is to move forward with every opportunity for the faculty to have greater engagement in the community and also to communicate that. So perhaps it, it, to the extent there are issues to be raised, and obviously you're raising some here today, that's why the Senate should have a committee doing this. That's not only separate from, but also incorporated into the larger university. Level. So I, I thank you for bringing up the issues, and, I, and hopefully more people who have real concern in this area, as well as want to expand it, will be a part of the committee. We need a moratorium on sending these letters threatening discipline for faculty members who are engaging in legitimate outside activity until this occurs. Okay. I, I want to, I think that, uh, so I'm going to take a comment from Provost Perry because I think it's uh, germane to the to what's been said before, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to call on you. Provost? Okay, thanks Mr. President, and let me applaud your statement there, by the way. I would just like to say, um, we, all of us, want to encourage public comment by our faculty. You are experts in your field. That's why you are employed here at Florida Atlantic University. But when you make such public comments, all we ask is that you follow what is laid out in the collective bargaining agreement. And I'll read you the section that is pertinent to this. It's Article 5.3, Section D. This has been a part of the BOT UFF collective bargaining agreement for many years. When speaking on any matter of public interest, a faculty member shall make clear when comments represent personal opinions and when they represent official university opinions. That's a simple statement. Thank you. And all we ask, all of us at the university, not just the administration of Santa Lance, that we abide by the rules of our own collectively bargaining agreement. Senator Durant. Uh, I've chaired the Academic Freedom of Due Process Committee, uh, I guess at least going on my third year. And this is a very serious uh, matter. I have a couple questions, one of which is, by what authority is the Vice President of Public Affairs writing letters to faculty members? I also uh, am concerned that the collective bargaining group, and I agree with the programs, absolutely, issue the disclaimer that you're not speaking on behalf of the university. I mean, that's almost a no-brainer. But we have to get prior approval. I consider this a form of prior restraint of academic freedom for academics to engage in community without getting a permission note from the administration. I have a colleague that was taken into the woodshed because he wrote an uh, op-ed letter to the local newspaper. This is highly inappropriate. I don't think we need a committee for community engagement when it comes to academic freedom. And to be quite frank, I don't care what the collective bargaining agreement is. We have certain rights as academics to engage in the community, to speak our mind, to engage, participate in the marketplace of ideas. Uh, and, and I agree with Tim. We need to have a cease and desist order from this vice president who is not an academic, to stop writing letters to professors. I don't want to have to get a permission note before I write something on the internet or go to a meeting someplace that's unrelated to the university. This is absurd. It's insane. And secondly, and thirdly, the scandal that Tim referred to, that's not a scandal from faculty members. That was a scandal of the administration, the previous administration, how they handled it. But uh, so could let somebody me, please explain to me, perhaps the president could, why this vice president is writing letters to academics, to professors, and more or less chastising them for engaging in their First Amendment rights. So uh, I, I can say that I don't believe that the VP was actually the person that wrote that letter. I have, I have not seen the letter at this point. But uh, he seems to be surprised that there had been uh, some further discussion. So, uh, I, again, I, I agree with a lot of what you said. Uh, I, I do think agree. I do think <laughs> that uh, that 
that, that it's important to have uh, a robust academic environment here where academic freedom can be exercised. Uh, I, I think that um, I, I think that there is a conversation to be had about this issue of what needs to be reported and what does not. What, and we what, certainly what must not end up with that. I'm, excuse me. We certainly must not end up with a situation where the content of what a faculty member says ends up being the deciding factor in whether uh, action is taken, right? So uh, I, I think that particularly as we push forward on this initiative, which is essential to the university's strategic vision for where we want to go, that we need to think uh, very seriously about these issues. And I, and I think that the situation that all of us are talking obliquely about uh, is, is an example that we should keep in mind as we have these conversations. But I think that we need to have these conversations civilly and to try to come to some sort of shared vision of how this process is going to work at FAU. And uh, that is what we need to focus on going forward, I think. But see, there's the problem. We're so, going someplace, and where that place is seems to be the, a departure from academic freedom. If there's academic freedom, and a professor or an academic so makes the disclaimer, I am not speaking on behalf of What I just said was that we need to have a conversation about how this scenario would play out in the future. Right? And, and, and how and what role academic freedom has played in this, to what extent academic freedom may or may not have been compromised in this scenario, and, uh, and how the process should work in the future to minimize any adverse impact was on academic freedom. Of the, uh, so would you I am that going to you ask to table any further discussion or questions about this because it is premature, because I don't know enough about the specifics of this instance. And I welcome uh, any of you uh, to, to talk to me privately about this. I don't know if we can go fur further playing this, uh, this, this week is, game. This is the Faculty Senate, Chris. This is where we have these discussions. There's nothing to be private about. It impacts the faculty. The senators represent the but, faculty. But at the yes, moment, yes. it is not a fact that is before the Senate what the impact has been. So this is not a conversation that we can have properly at the moment. I don't understand why not. That's why we're here. This is a discussion forum. Can I say something, please? Yes, Can I say something? Thank you. Well, I go to the media a lot. And I'm asked from Iran to China, to Saudi Arabia, to everybody to comment. But I can tell you this. I will never say anything that goes against the interest of the university. And I make that sure when I go over any TV, or I write, or go over, including U.S. government meetings. And I go to them on a frequent basis. But this is it's okay with me. But what, I, what you are saying here, and this is where it does not sit well with me, and I felt kind of disappointed, really, when I received an email. And this is what the email said, and extremely important to note, that FAU has requirements including but not limited to receiving permission from the Office of University of Communication and the Office of the Provost prior to speaking to the media, including student media, every single time you engage in such activity. So what you are saying, already you have movement in the direction to curb us from talking to the media. And here I am someone that I consider myself extremely loyal, and I love FAU, and I consider FAU my home. So this is where it is really conflicting to us. And, oh, okay, so I am not aware of this email, yeah. and I, I think that this is an issue where we need to have a conversation about how this is supposed to work at so, this university. I don't know that this is the place for it because we have not had an opportunity as a group to look at the facts around this situation. So what I am asking is that we approach this uh, at a later meeting. Would, would it be appropriate to send it to the academic freedom? Um, I don't think that that is warranted at this time. The academic freedom and due process committee uh, should, there, there is nothing to send to them at the moment as far as I read. Okay. 
No, there's of not. Of course there is. There is not for it. All right, I see, I see four more hands that are up. Bill. But, but I assume, Chris, that in your deliberations over the next week or two, that if you do find some cause, that you would refer to it. Yes, I would. I, I do not know what's going to be on the agenda for next time about this. You. Well, the request has been made that until uh, it's settled what the policy is, that uh, we should not be. A request has been made that until uh, the policy is settled, that no more threatening letters should be sent. I don't know where they originate from, and certainly uh, it seems as if it's not always clear. But I think it does seem like a reasonable request, so I'm hoping that it can be forwarded and hopefully addressed, because it's impossible. Uh, it seems as if, if the letters aren't an indication that a policy has been made without our input, then uh, a policy is being enacted without being fully planned. Thank you. The problem is very simple. Autocracy and freedom of expression are incompatible. Okay? <laughs> Fred, and then we will start. Yeah, uh, I don't, I think that's I don't shut off. Is that okay. the one? Okay. Uh, yeah, just the point here, Tim uh, said, raised a question, does a person wanting to speak at the public library to discuss his book, possibly even to sell copies of it, does he need permission from the Office of Public Affairs before making such a speech? We know that he has to say any opinions that I express here do not represent the university. If he doesn't do that, he's in trouble. And he should be in trouble. But does he have to get permission? Tim asked the question. Robert gave, the, gave an example of where he was told he needed to ask permission before giving a talk, or suggested that by, by it was suggested by the nature of that correspondence. Can we know from, we've got top administrators here, can we know? the answer to that question, and why is it not appropriate for that question, if there is a conflict on it, to be referred now to academic freedom and due process. That's how I understood what academic freedom and due process was supposed to do. Okay. Uh, does anybody want to comment on that? As provost, I would just restate what I said earlier. You're welcome. Our faculty to make public comment give the appropriate attribution as necessary as stated very simply in the collective bargaining agreement. Uh, I will just call up and say, Robert, I'd love to see that email because I can assure you no such policy has been issued from the Office of Academic Affairs. I, I will also add that one of the things that I've done this week is to look at the form that needs to be filled out. And it's a little bit, it's, a, it's, it's confusing about whether it applies in this uh, hypothetical scenario that you're talking about. I understand that there is a revision to that form because of new federal laws surrounding grants and conflict of interest and so forth. So the form is currently being revised. And, uh, I, and I hope that we'll see that a draft of that form soon so that it becomes clear you know, how it would work in, the, in, this, in that scenario. Uh, do you have any outside employment for me? I am. Yeah, we, we are, we'll definitely give you that. We've been trying to get a change to that for about two years. Uh, we're still working on it, but I agree with you there needs to be a clarity in that form as to what's the what company. Right. There, there needs to be, especially from the Division of Research, um, clarity of other conflict. That's all we're trying to work on. I think it's rare that we're going to be that. Uh, Okay, so I uh, am very pleased to see how passionate everybody is about this issue. This is a very good sign for the university. Uh, so.